Mr. Otaku Spirit has finally uploaded a video that is not longer than 50 minutes, so I can actually react to it. Best anime of summer 2024 season so far. I'm gonna assume uh, Roshidere and maybe Losing Heroines will be his favorite. Let's check out what he has to say. Summer 2022 is easily one of the hypest season of recent history. Having legend- Is it? Is Summer 24 the most hype it's been in recent history? I feel like this is the slow season where it's just a bunch of rom-coms. Winter 2024, Spring 2024, there's some insane series. And people right now are kind of benched and waiting for Fall 2024 to come up with more hype. I don't think Summer is really hype right now. I do enjoy a lot of the anime that's airing, but to Mr. Otaku Spirit, maybe he finds Summer 2024 most hype. Legendary anime like Monogatari series returning, while also introducing a massive amount of promising titles to steal your time. At its surface, it seems like a lot of the more promising titles are rom-coms, but there's still a comfortable mix of different genres to fit your taste. And mm -hmm. damn, do a lot of them look so visually good. You can expect anything from Cyberpunk's Lucy, starring as Harley Quinn, and Suicide Squad's Sekai. Mm. I voided my wife's manufacturer warranty and- <laughs> Robot waifu, I didn't check out how many of you are actually still watching this shit. And the first episode looked like one of those viral episodes that people would check out based on the series title alone. It's like, what the fuck? Your waifu's a fucking robot? But uh, I don't know if it's actually good. In bed. Two OP protagonists that don't know they're OP. Yeah, parry anime. I love it. Osan Newbie Adventure. I parry everything so good right now. This sister protects her sister's vir no virginity from a deer. This sister wants to take her brother. <laughs> this sister wants to take her brother's virginity. Yo, Taku Spirit fucking spitting with this intro right now. That don't know they're OP. This sister protects yeah. her sister's virginity from a yeah. deer. This sister wants to take her brother's virginity. It's <laughs> yeah. okay. It's cosplay, Ponsu. It doesn't count. <laughs> That's right, Aqua. Day. Afrata is back, and it actually managed to look worse. Wait, yo, we haven't checked out Otaku Spirit since, like, winter 2024, because I was watching his solo leveling videos, and I should have honestly watched his Mushoku Tensei videos, but is it just me, or did he get a lot more funnier? What the fuck? This whole intro? He just, like, dished out, like, ten separate fucking jokes? <laughs> like, it was, that was really good. Smug Russian waifu. Smug sister waifu. Yeah. Smug childhood friend waifu. Yeah. Gah, they're all beautiful. Yoko Taro is back for more near, and it's tragic it's as scheduling. selling magical girl ludes on eBay. In you motherfuckers. I thought that this 11 minute episode, you know, the rom com series was supposed to be a wholesome, cute show. Why is this looking like Tentacruel, bro? Come on now. In another world with my divorce proceedings, how to train your lolly. <laughs> this boy made millions of otaku question their sexuality. Yes. Don't yeah. With this girl's cake. Thick fantasy ludes. Waver bullies a talentless protagonist. Waver. Oh, I know that real. Oh, now I know why he looks like. Okay, because like I was looking at this dude. And I'm like, what does he really remind me of? I remind me of the guy from Windbreaker. Remember Mad Dog? But also in Fate Grand Order, one of the most OP units back in the early day is Waver. It's Waver. It's him. Protagonist. Breaking child labor laws in another world. Mass That's right. These kids, these kids yearn for labor. That's right. Another world. Mass producing best girl. Cat girls with debuffs. <laughs> this VTuber company has way too many sexual yeah. harassment violations. Okay. Cheating on her girlfriend because she's not a Trekkie. My replacement leg is a lolly. My okay. teacher caught me in 4K. But for every season, you don't need to sit through all 60 anime titles to figure out what's good or not. I've gone through it all, and I'm here to give you my all top right. 10 new anime of the season so far. Give it to as well me. as my favorite continuing series that you should get caught up on. So let's dive into it, starting with my top 10 new anime titles. Mm -hmm. Now, this is very difficult. This is a very difficult 10 list to make. And that's because, yes. Roshidere? I'm surprised you didn't talk about Tower of God or, uh, like, um, what's it called? Tower of God or, fuck, was it Oshinoko? Oshinoko was never even mentioned the entire... Uh, no, 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 he said, no, 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 he made, he made a joke about Akane. I don't think Tower of God was mentioned. I think that... Roshidere is definitely top at the moment. Wistoria, Tower of God for me. These three are amazing. Isekai Shikaku is fucking amazing. That's four. And these aren't in order. I'm just thinking about, like, the top ten right now. Nokotan's pretty fun, so that's already five gone. Let's think about the last five. Too many losing heroines. Loki is actually pretty good so far. I'm actually enjoying it, even though I'm really mad at it. Um, have I mentioned Oshinoko? If I have an Oshinoko, I should probably get in there. There's three left now. Uh, did I already mention Wistoria? Um, I'm not sure if I parry everything should make it in or Osan Newbie Adventure. Those are pretty good, but maybe those two make it in. Elusive Samurai? I'm not honestly Elusive Samurai. I'm not too into. 
The historical shit, I, I can see that it's an amazing anime, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. And my audience actually doesn't really give a fuck about it. But um, other than that, I'd have to really think about it. But the top five, for sure. The bottom five, I'm not really sure. Yes, there's a lot of promising titles that I can see falling off very, very quickly. Such is the case of my number 10, okay. which is How to Become Ordinary. This show looks so freaking good. The director, the studio, the team working on it. Visually, this show is top notch. I love its style. I love its character design. I love the attention to detail that it has. It's about two students, Kabuto and Osanai, who are trying to become normal. And okay. they promise to support each other in order to do this. What are they? Just a bunch of degens? And they're trying to become normies? What sort of unfolds for the first few episodes is that the two of them are kind of getting wrapped up in different mysteries. And yes, they're very mundane mysteries. We're talking about a purse is missing that doesn't have anything valuable in it. How to make cocoa with three cups. Some really stupid and mundane things. Well very slow slice of life, but the characters are just so, I don't know, well written that it's just a good watch. At the same time, sprinkling this idea of the two of them changing themselves. Even having a best friend questioning Kobato, mm -hmm. why are you so different? What has actually happened to you? Now, the reason why it has my attention so much is I'd really love the chemistry between Kobato and Osunai, and I love the mystery about what they're actually changing. It seems that Kobato's thing that he wants to become ordinary from is being a know-it-all. This is a guy that whenever there's a mystery or there's something that somebody doesn't know what's going on, actually, but he doesn't do that anymore. That's the kind of character he was. He's the first person to figure it out, and this has apparently led him to some trouble. And the question mark is, is the buildup for Osanai's whole thing that she's trying to leave behind. And I think that's where it's going to either make or break this show for me is the reveal on what exactly she's trying to become ordinary from. Okay. My current prediction is that she had violent tendencies when she was younger. and it So it's still a mystery on what the girl's, you know, degeneracy was in the past. Seems like that violent tendency is coming back. And okay. whether or not they really deliver on that or start to get into better mysteries is going to make or break this show for me. But so far... Despite the mundane moments that this is kind of capturing, it has promise, and I really hope that it delivers on that promise. But I'm honestly, it's making me think that like we're missing out right now. And yeah, I feel like, and honestly, stuff like this sometimes the best type of reactions from me are stuff that I constantly yap about. And fighting animes is not really it. Sometimes drama animes like that, it's there's a lot of sweet fucking content for me to just go on a rant about. This anime never really got mentioned by anybody in my community though, and it just didn't really seem like the series that would do well on my channel, but if you truly wanted to watch it, you would simply vote it in and win a community poll, right? Yet I don't see any recommendations. Fortunately, because I haven't been completely sold that they're going to deliver, that's why it's at number 10 for me. Okay. Moving on to my number 9, we have 2.5 2 dude, it's like, you horn dog. all right, all right how, how are you going to tell me that this is such a good anime otaku spirit other than the fan service? Let's hear it. 2.5 Dimensional Seduction. I've been really enjoying this show so far. Now, yes, let's just call it what it is. Yeah. It's my dress up darling yeah. Walmart brand. It's the <laughs> Walmart brand. Yo, where the disrespect comes. It's the superior My Dress Up Darling. The thirstier My Dress Up Darling. It's the Dress Up Darling's doing really well. Let's make this story. But all yeah. that aside, it is still an enjoyable show in itself. And I really like it more because it's really taking it in a different direction with cosplay. And yes, the etchier aspects that come from it. You have a main character who was bullied at some point. So thus he doesn't like 3D girls. And so he just wants to focus on 2D girls. Mm -hmm. Specifically his waifu Lilio. And then you have randomly out of nowhere, some beautiful girl shows up that wants to cosplay as, as said Lilio. character. Yep. Very, very convenient. And yes, conveniently, he has a childhood friend who's a model that wants to cosplay for him as well. It's all a recipe for... Ah, oh, so that's what's happening afterwards. We only watched episode one and I deleted the videos off of YouTube because right now, again, we're experiencing tremendous growth on the YouTube channel. And I am not going to risk any community TOS regarding fan service shit. Therefore, for the next three months, we are a Christian channel. I, it was pretty decent. I don't know, the first episode, it was, it was amusing. I hear that there's a lot of censorship, obviously, from the localizers regarding this anime. It is what it is. For just etchy, goofy shenanigans. And it's definitely not afraid of what it is. And now, yes, unfortunately, it is afraid of showing too much because who knows? When I was a loser, I didn't pull like this, what the fuck? Well, yeah, of course not. Because in reality, losers like this don't get any bitches. But in order to sell a fantasy towards those losers, you create an anime where you can self-insert your loser self, but this time they get all the girls and it is a power fantasy. This is how they take control of the loser degenerate market through, you know, etchy or fan servicey rom-coms like this. You think I'm wrong? I'm not wrong. I'm sorry that your feelings are hurt, but deep inside, you know I'm right.
was because of the broadcast block or maybe they wanted to change things on how the tone is but yes it is very unfortunate how much etchy has been kind of removed from the source material to the adaptation but still there's plenty here i enjoy the shenanigans i love the characters i love the comedy and remember it's not about etchy of why we people are complaining right regarding the censorship right a lot of people have this talking point of, oh, the censorship is happening. They're not showing enough ass or tits. Well, you're here to just watch anime. If you want to go with Tentai, just go do that yourself. It's not about that. It's about the precedence that the censorship takes and what that does for future content. Give them a centimeter or give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Remember, censorship is all about what it could happen to the future if people realize that they can get away with these kind of censorships. It's not about the tits and ass. It's about what it means for the future. I love the chemistry they have so far. I will admit the main character is loud at times, but it's got enough here. It's got some character development moments, enough to have me excited for two cores. Moving on to my number eight, let's get into some wholesome. Let's get into some right. wholesome lolly with Autry, my dear moments. The moment. Atri is a show that some people have mentioned for me to watch, but again, I just didn't really have that my faith that my audience really would want this shit. When I seen the visual novel for this series pop up, I was in love with the character designs of the main character, Atari. And so okay. when this was getting an adaptation and by Troika, I was super excited for it. And while I won't say that the first episodes have completely blown me away about this series so far, I have mm -hmm. been thoroughly enjoying it. Authority herself is a manufactured sunshine. It takes place in a world where the water levels are rising and civilization is not doing well. And uh -oh. we follow Natsuki, who eventually gets a lead on some treasures down in some laboratory, which he ends up finding Atari, a robot, brings her to the surface, claims that he's going to sell her, but then over time, it seems like the two of them are forming a bond. Okay. There's a lot in the story about futures and the past and being... Which one's better? My wife is a robot or Atari? Being stuck in one place and really kind of discovering the idea of a possible future. And like I said before, Atari is just too adorable i love her shenanigans i love the chemistry between her and the main character yeah even like the scenes that he's showing in the top right corner it does look very cunny or just constantly him calling her scraps and her claiming that there's anti-discrimination laws for <laughs> robots all this kind of stuff and yes like typical with these visual novels i'm just waiting for it to just rip my heart out and stomp on it five times next up we have is Elusive my number Samurai. seven which is also visually really really good Yes, in terms of pure animation quality, this stands out amongst others. Right now, I think Elusive Samurai, Wistoria, Oshinoko, Roshitere. Doga Kobo is just cooking with the animation quality. But yeah, I think Elusive Samurai definitely hits for animation purely. Regarding the story, it is interesting enough. I've never been a huge fan of Japanese history anime, and I don't think my audience is either. But it's entertaining enough to watch so far. I hope the next episode does well, or I'm dropping this shit, guys. And that is The Elusive Samurai. My gosh, this show looks so freaking good. The it animation does. is absolutely top-notch. Cloverworks just going absolutely berserk. And yes, it was one of the series that I was looking forward to the most coming into this season. Now, I had a lot of reservation with this show as well, because the creator of it was the creator of Assassination Classroom, which I oh. enjoyed Assassination Classroom, but... I wasn't sold on it. Like, I wasn't a big fan. And that was mainly around the idea that I just didn't really care for their comedy. And yes, that's unfortunately present with this show as well. The comedy is very jarring for me. But outside... I mean, like, what is the comedy, right? The comedy is... Oh, hello! I have my lights on in my hat and I make funny face and I'm gonna make the Shota scared and I'm gonna say sussy shit to the Shota here and there. And then I get serious sometimes. And then the contrast is a gap moe of, you know, my character, Jigojo Satoru, who is the fucking, I don't know, he's like a future site. Eh, in comedies, it's, it's alright. I, I, it's jarring? Maybe, yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's just, I don't watch it for the comedy, but I don't, I know what he's saying. Side of that, I really, really love the show. I think he's got a really solid setup. It's very Rironi Kenshin-esque, and I was really not expecting that. It's the How? idea of this entire clan being betrayed and the son of the clan being rescued by this priest. And the okay. whole idea here is that this prince that was rescued is really good at hiding, very good at evading, and mm. being, yes, elusive. elusive. The plan that this priest has for this prince is they'll play a game of tag, gather yep. allies, lure out their enemy, use his elusiveness to pretty much take them down. All for I did enjoy how they broke that down and they kind of introduced this, you know, there's a comparison of playing tag for battle because he is introduced as a very swift and quick and nimble kid. And how is he going to fight against all of these cracked people, right? Well, you keep dodging, you keep baiting, and then you have your retainers, your, I know, to fight for you. And then you come down with the swing too. Yeah, it's, it's fine. 
for the hope that one day he'll reclaim the glory of his clan. Like I said before, visually this show is just fantastic. The animation is absolutely fantastic. Now, why it's down at seven, despite the fact that there's all these positive around it, is that yes, there's more better anime. I can see this show could possibly get a little bit formulaic, but additionally, yes, the comedy itself doesn't work for me. And it does seem like the comedy is very much a focus. Even still, I'm looking for- Is the comedy a focus? Honestly, the most recent episode with the fake actors, that, was, that bit was kind of funny to me, but I could totally understand why he would rate it low. It's not even low, it's still top seven, right? Just because of the comedy. Forward to more of it, and I'm really hoping that it kind of exceeds my expectations. For my number six, I have Sakuna of Rice and Ruin. This show was an absolute treat for me. I was not expecting this to be, of the three shows that PA Works was working on this season, this was the one that was going to stand out to me. And like, I see an anime like this, and I immediately know that my audience on YouTube does not give a fuck about this. Maybe you as an individual in chat, yeah, maybe there's some hardcore fans, but I guarantee you, if I'll put out a reaction for this, it would fucking flop on release. I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that this show is just, it's really charming. I love the style of it. Visually, it is by far the best of the three offerings of PA Works this season. The animation's fantastic. The character designs are very unique. And it's all a surprise because it's based off of a video game. But so far, thankfully, the fact that it's from a video game has not hurt the story itself. It's essentially about this goddess, Sakuna, who's been pretty much living off the rice that her mother left behind. Being ordered to go to this island where her mother cultivated that rice and met her husband, where she pretty much learns more about her family, as well as a lot of things. So the main character is just the fucking leech. Just living off of mom's old rice. Things like responsibility and, yes, camaraderie. Because she's okay. stuck with a band of useless humans. And the five of them are pretty much being pushed to have to work together in order to survive. It's got wholesomeness, it's got charm, it's got visuals, it's got style. And yes, I'm kind of learning a little bit about rice at the same time. I can't wait for more and hopefully it's a full adaptation at this point. Moving on to my number five. Yes, great pick. Isekai Shikaku, this shit hits. It's actually so good. First couple episodes... It was good enough with the whole suicide risen comedy alone. Episode 4, turning point. It just changed. It's getting serious now. And I hear it's going to continue to get serious, which I'm actually down for. Like a serious plot has been introduced to the story ever since episode 4. And episode 1 to 3 was no joke. It was a joke, as in how fun it was. And yes, another pleasant surprise for me is no longer allowed in another world. The isekai take. Like, this is the best isekai for me this season. Right? I mean, what, what's the, what's the comp competition? Raising kids isekai. It's all right. Um, what's the other isekai right now? Failure frame? Eh, I'm not really feeling it. I, isekai Shikaku is way better. It doesn't really have much competition this season because it's not really an isekai season. Yeah, Suicide Squad also kind of mid, right? Isekai Shikaku though, it's, it's, it's... Even though there's no competition, I think that it could stand well against competition next season. Like with all the different isekai showing up. On Dazai, the author that, unfortunately, Japanese writers cannot let die. That's kind of ironic. It follows Osama Dazai as he is doing a double in themselves with his beloved Sachan. When, unfortunately, the Isekai truck shows up. Literally, in this story, there is a truck that its mm -hmm. sole purpose is to find depressed people yeah. and run into them to Isekai them to a fantasy world where they get a second shot with OP. I love how they broke the fourth wall and just like Yep said, yep, truck couldn't exist in this anime because, you know, in every isekai, not every isekai, but a lot of them, you know, they get hit by a vehicle known as truck and then they get reincarnated, right? So nice to see that they're kind of leaning into the memes here. The abilities. But unfortunately, yes, they isekai the wrong person because Dazai does not want to live. And so he's just going out into the world, just trying to find somewhere where he can croak. Eventually, mm -hmm. he kind of realized that Sachan might be in that world, so he's trying to find her, but he ends up getting a band of different individuals kind of following with him as he travels about the world. And yes, despite the fact that other worlders are supposed to go to defeat the Demon Lord, he's just not going that direction. He's just focused on finding Sachan. And yes, as each encounter that he runs into, this is a guy that literally says, okay, if you're a bad guy and you don't like other worlders, go ahead and end me, and then some shenanigans will happen. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, oh, you want to kill me? And he's like, finally, please let me put, let me put the rest. And then the girls that he has are so OP that, he, you know, everything gets taken care of. But it's just crazy how this dude who seems so weak and he just has no powers within that poison thing was even, even in the most recent episode, the way that he was able to like, he got pierced through the stomach. He was like dying that he somehow was able to just like talk his way out against that demon Lord's daughter. That whole scene was so good. And ultimately, in the end, he survives. It's been a pleasant surprise for me. Honestly, this type of humor doesn't typically work for me. But I think a lot of my enjoyment's in the Konosuba style of, like, the group of the misfits. The group of the useless individuals. 
Better comedy for sure. Again, Konosuba-esque. I do enjoy the comedy in this anime. It was all coming together to fight something, and they're not really particularly OP in any way. The shenanigans that get into the demeanor of Dazai himself, which is voiced by the guy that does Araragi, and I love his laugh, it just turned into a really fun show that I'm enjoying, which is really surprising because I wasn't really a big fan of the creator's previous work, Love After World Domination. For my number four, I have... Love After World Domination? Yo, you guys know what that anime is? Back in the old, old times, in my first channel, when I had no community, when my channel was dead, I covered that anime. I watched that rom-com. It was a funny Power Ranger style anime where there's the good people with the Power Rangers and the evil force. And the evil force has the girl, and then the good force, the Power Rangers has the guy, and they secretly have like a love, you know, like a secret taboo relationship. The opening is fucking lit. I love that anime. It was such a comfortable, just chill anime to watch. It was a very fun rom-com with more of a calm than rom. I love that anime. I, I, I actually enjoyed it a lot. Unfortunately, again, that was like in my old channel, right? This, this, those files are gone. The magical girl and the evil lieutenant used to be arch nemesis. Yes. Ah, oh, this is the other show I remember. But again, because it had like 11 minute episode releases, I just didn't know how to, you know, put it into my schedule. So I'm not really watching it right now. A short in my top 10 list, which is an absolute shocker for me. I can't remember the last time I had a short in my top 10 list. BBW Elf, where is it? Yo, are you not watching, you know? <laughs> My plus-sized elf otaku spirit. So far. But I love this show so much. It was one of those shows that when I fired it up, I'm like, holy crap, this show looks really, really good. Why does this show look so good? Oh, Studio Bones is working on it. Got the it. concept here is that the evil lieutenant, Mira, is being sent to take down the magical girl. Well, very quickly, upon first sight, he falls head over heels in love with the magical girl herself. But there's one major problem with Byakuya. She's what? being exploited by the angel that made her a magical girl. <gasps> oh, the angel no. has her working day and night with different odd jobs just to make a bunch of money that goes straight into his pocket. So <laughs> That's low-key kind of funny. The magical girl is just basically took a sweatshop. ...is in this conflict where he really cares about Byakuya. He's in love with Byakuya. But at the same time, he has his responsibility for the evil organization to take down Byakuya. At the same time, he's just heartbroken over the fact that Byakuya is always tired and literally yeah. going to die of exhaustion. The show has a mixture of multiple things here. One, again, like I said earlier, Bones, the presentation visually this show is just too damn good looking. At the mm -hmm. same time, it has so many great punch lines to it, like the whole situation with him sending out a massive slime. He checks out his monitor and then he finds out that Byakuya is stuck inside the slime being licked and stuff like that. And so uh -oh. he immediately destroys his own slime. I think the licking scene is the tentacle scene that we saw in the other... I don't know which video it was. We've been watching way too many YouTube videos, but there was that one scene where that, you know, this girl was, you know, wrapped around slimes. And to protect her. And then you have this sprinkle of, like, tragedy in the idea that this Byakuya girl is just, again, being yeah. exploited by this angel, and this angel is a dirtbag. Now, granted, that's par for the course for a lot of these Kyobe-type characters. But it's like yeah, I'm this, laughing this, at how this dark scene. this angel is. But at the same time, I'm rooting for this evil lieutenant to just go take the thing out. I'm loving it so far. Lots of laughs. Visually fantastic. And I just cannot wait for more. Low key. We could wait until the last month of this season. And just start uploading double episode reactions together. So that we have six reactions. You know, basically six episodes worth of content, regular stuff. We could do that. Now, it, I don't know. I, I'd have to vet for it. Like, we definitely could schedule that in, but it's just like, I don't know if the viewership is there, you know? We could do gush. Exactly. We could just treat it like gushing romantical girls and just fucking you know, cover it in the last fucking week. But like, would people actually watch this is a question that I don't know. Moving on to my number three, we have Wincest. Yes. Mm. Days with my stepsister. I and this show is actually good. It's not my personal favorite. This genre is not my personal favorite. It is not my favorite show to watch simply because of the whole premise of it. Like, it's just a genre, this drama type. I don't give a fuck about it. But I can still acknowledge that it is objectively good. And it's not trying to bait with the incest themes either. It's trying to give a fuck and give a good story. I am very shocked about how much I'm enjoying this show. Joe, if she had an OnlyFans, would you subscribe? Even though I will admit that this is not going to be a show for a lot of people. It follows a guy named Yuta, whose father is now remarrying into a new family. Yeah. And yes, with that... The dad is the luckiest motherfucker. Like, of all the winners in this show, like of all the characters, the dad is the fucking luckiest. 
Hey, you can't make an OnlyFans until you know she's in college, man. What are you thinking about 16-year-old Joe? Why aren't you going to wait for two to three years? I think you're self-reporting right now. Comes a new sister who's pretty much his age. And what follows this is this stepbrother and the stepsister yeah. kind of getting closer and closer together. There's a lot of emphasis here on what they've gone through before with their previous parents. And the emphasis on how much distrust they have for other people, despite mm -hmm. the fact they're trying to be warm and welcoming of each other. Right. The whole like dependency stuff of like they want to be independent. I want to rely on you. There's no strings attached. But then she's starting to become more and more for real. Never bought any OnlyFans. Freshest anime has never bought an OnlyFans subscriptions. This is... Someone's got to fact check this. Anyways, uh, we got... <laughs> What's going on? The... The... <laughs> <laughs> Pornhub exists, why my OnlyFans? Because for the parasocial interactions, Joe. It's about the personal connection with the creator. <laughs> why watch anime reactions when you could just watch anime? <laughs> because you want to have that connection with the reactor and you feel like, oh, they have the same opinions as me, blah, blah, blah. We're getting off topic. This show, it is deeper than it looks, yes. Saki has a lot of issues with her trying to prove herself to other people that just because she's beautiful doesn't mean that she wants to solve everything with her body. At the <laughs> last episode, you want to buy my body? At the same time, it seems like Yuta has a lot of problems with trusting other women because of some issues in the past with his mother. Why I said mm. this show might not be for everybody is because, yes, I can see a lot of this show being boring for people. Yeah. Whereas I feel... But, like, again, everyone has different subjective opinions on what they think is entertainment. And I think that this genre of this drama... It's not for everybody, especially in my audience, where it's a bunch of unga boonga, you know, fantasy, power fantasy, isekai enjoyers. But I'm surprised enough that the YouTube audience for my community, they're actually watching this more than some anime such as Gichi Harum or stuff like that. Joe, also, I dropped Gichi Harum. Gichi Harum, fucking cringe. Joe, are you fucking watching Gichi Harum without cringing? Literally, last reaction, not this week, last episode, mid-reaction, there was like four separate times where I was like, I want to end this reaction. I want to just like stop recording and just watch something else. Like, that's all I could ever think about. So for some reason, I became the biggest hater, even though I enjoyed episode one. Something, because there's no fucking plot. It's just the same repeated bullshit over and over and over. Now, Data Live was goaded, bro. Data Live actually had a fucking plot that was actually interesting enough to theorize on. Gigi Harm is the same bullshit. The bitch put on the same fucking. Oh, I am Tsundere kun. I am Imp kun. I am fucking cool. They do this shit over and over. Like, do something else. Introduce a new fucking girl. God damn it. I feel like a lot of it makes it feel grounded and realistic. These characters don't act anime. They yeah. don't get into goofy shenanigans all the time. Their conversations aren't to punchlines. It's two kids with some sort of trauma slow. You guys should go watch Joe though for Kiji Haram. We dropped that shit. We watching fucking more dangerous in my heart instead. Fully growing comfortable with each other. And a lot of the shots seem purposeful for setting the mood of the characters. Like having a very long scene where the two of them are eating in silence. But I think it's those steps they're taking. Okay, you cannot justify the si Okay, 40 seconds of eating animation? Bro. Fuck that! There was nothing that added to the story because of the 40 seconds of eating animation. You know for a fact, Studio Dean was trying to pad their time just like how Demon Slayer was doing when Muichiro and Tanjiro were throwing the 10 airplanes. Bro, that was the same shit. It was a funny moment. It was very funny, but you did not have to have 40 fucking seconds of eating, bro. Speaking with the story so far, that has me kind of immersed and intrigued on where they'll take the characters next. Moving on to number two, I have... Actually based. As much as how I'm upset and triggered and angry in those reactions for too many losing heroines, I want you to know that I enjoy watching it. My god, this blue-haired girl is such a fucking bitch. I hate her. She deserves it. But if you think about it, they're all just dumb middle school kids. They got no idea what they're doing. And honestly, it is a very fun watch. Even with the twist. Even with the twist of the teachers, bro, the, there was, we already had an alcoholic teacher. And then the other teachers suddenly, like, bugging the rooms and trying to fucking listen to, like, what the relationship fucking chart is. It's actually subverting expectations. I genuinely do enjoy watching this show. Of Makine, Too Many Losing Heroines. This show is so, so freaking fantastic from beginning to end. I literally thought it was going to dethrone number one. And it got really... Roche did it? Oshinoko is still not mentioned, huh? I mean, is it a hot take to say too many losing heroines is better than Oshinoko? Bro, 
I mean, in terms of just numbers on YouTube reaction space. Oh, this is the only new anime? Got it. That's why Oshinoko is not here. I don't know. I feel like too many losing heroines. Like, you guys are simply voting with your numbers. Right? Everybody is talking about this show. Nobody talking about Oshinoko, man. What's going on? Really, really close. Yes, first and foremost, this show looks absolutely fantastic. The director and... Yeah, A1 Picture is just stunning animation. I do agree. The team working on this project is doing a phenomenal job of this. Every single shot where you have some sort of dramas happening or you have a comedy beat happening, a punchline, the expressiveness of the characters just sells every single... Yeah, with story is not in, in mentioned, I guess. Well, I think that Otaku Spirit is less of a power fantasy battle shonen guy like us, right? I can understand all the picks that he's had so far are definitely the opposite of, you know, like Wistoria and like Osan Yubi Adventure and stuff like that that our channel enjoys, which is, again, entertainment is subjective. That's guys' opinions. Single scene. The concept of the show is pretty much what happens to all those poor girls that don't win the main mm -hmm. character of any other rom-com series. They end up with our main character, Kazuhiko. Our first girl, Anna, was pushing her childhood friend to go after the one that he loves. And thus, she's heartbroken and... You deserve that shit, Anna. You want to be treated like a floor mat? You fucking deserve to be treated like a floor mat. Also, complaining all the time to our main character about how she hates seeing the two of them together. We have... Mm -hmm. And I never fucking asked either. Anna, fuck off. I never... I don't want your life story. Why are you fucking ranting to me? Just give me my fucking bento and just fuck off. The woman who is like the track star, the childhood friend that she loves, thought that she was too good for him, so he... I hope that Anna falls in love with the main character. And then she gets cucked by Lemon. So it's like double cuckception. She already got cucked by her childhood friend. And now she thinks that she's in this safe space where she can hang out with all the loser girls. No, I hope Lemon wins and Anna gets cucked. She deserves it. Found somebody else. And thus her waiting too long, she lost him. We have Chica who's in love with the club president. And it seems like he's in love with his childhood friend. It's just a bunch of girls that have romance problems. And it, again, they're all kind of... I don't see how Chica's going to be able to do anything. She's like... She has no aura. She has no riz. She, she's literally like kindergarten zone. She gave, she's probably might be the funniest though. Something about her tendencies of being awkward. Just the way that she talks. It's kind of creepy, but kind of funny. And divulging that to our main character, despite the fact that he doesn't want to get involved with any of it. Additionally, we have a teacher who's bugging each room to listen to the romance between the students. Yeah. And we have a sister for our main character who's just Let's not forget the sister, you know, the teacher that bugs everyone's rooms and listen to these kids and, you know, gets in things that you should go to jail for. Her friend, her best friend is a fucking alcoholic as well. Desperately hoping that he finds not alcoholic outside of work. I mean, drunk at school, which is funny because I also had a teacher. I don't think she was a teacher. I think she was like a lunch hall monitor. I'm not sure if she was a teacher, but she was on the teacher staff and on, on the school staff. She we would <laughs> what was her nickname? Fuck, I forget, but basically, she would just down a Mickey of vodka every morning or something, I swear. And she would just walk around drunk as fuck, just saying the most, just crazy shit. And we're just asking, like, oh my god, how does she still have her job? Friends and hopefully romance. It just has a really fantastic cast of characters, really fantastic chemistry, great writing, great comedy, great punchlines. And again, it just looks really, really good. Yeah. It even has a sprinkle of etchy, which I was really surprised about. Where he gets stuck in a storage room and has to spray this girl to keep her from having a heat stroke. And the entire time she moans inappropriately. Uh -huh. Cannot wait for more of it. Absolutely fantastic. Too many losing heroin. You can't just like cut yourself from saying, wow, so many moans inappropriately. And then immediately say, absolutely love it. Can't wait for more. <laughs> the transition just made a little sense. But yes, I think that the anime is pretty decent. I enjoyed, you know, Too Many Losing Heroines. It definitely caught me by surprise. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. In the first episode, I was fucking mad watching that shit. Because, like, I'm projecting my own ideals onto these people and thinking, like, why are you trying to be all these cucked losers? You should live for yourself. But it's like, as the one comment said, bro is expecting dumb middle school kids to act like idealized, you know, adults of society. It's like, you know what? You're right. They are acting their age, and it's actually a very fun watch. And now, yeah, Roshidere number one, like who would have guessed, right? Roshidere, like not in just terms of numbers and performance on YouTube, but in personal enjoyment. I think Roshidere actually might be number one, man. I don't know. I feel like um, the more that like, obviously for YouTube reactors, like anime reactors, the more views you get for a series, your dopamine receptors goes off and you're able to conflate this feeling of happiness with how much you enjoy the anime. 
You know, stuff like that always happens. Like Eminence and Shadow also did the best. And I personally loved Eminence and Shadow, but no doubt that performance definitely plays a part in how much I enjoy a show. But even if I was not covering this show, maybe if I watched it by myself, I think that I would really enjoy this show. That finally gets us down to my number one show of the summer 2024 anime season yep. so far. And that's easily, without a doubt, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. Roshi this Dede. show is phenomenal. Yes, a lot of that has to do with having a cast of the most waifu material waifus ever. It follows our main character, Kuze. If you look at Yuki, Ali, and Masha, their face template, I feel like it's copy-pasted. There's a lot of similarities. No Astoria? Yes, because Otaku Spirit prefers more of slice of life and more romance and drama content more than battle shonen like we do. Zay, who has a girl that sits right next to him in class, who seems like she really, really hates him because he's a slacker and she's a hard worker. But every now and then, Alia will actually speak her true feelings, yes, in Russian. In Russian. Now, unbeknownst to her, Kuze actually knows Russian, mm -hmm. and so he knows everything she's saying, but he's a little bit too afraid to tell her that he knows what she's saying. So every single time he'll say like, what, what do you, what'd you say? And she'll say, oh, no, I said that you're really annoying. Through those Russian words, yes, it's obvious that Alia does like him. Just to I mean, she literally said, I love you in the most recent episode. Doesn't want to admit it. Call it a Russian sunete. And this even gets worse as later on you have Alia's doing things in order to tease him, and most of the time he'll kind of accept it, and it just completely throws her off. Like having him put on a stocking for her and then him actually doing it and her getting completely flustered. We're also- Like, the more I think about that episode one fan service, like, ha like there hasn't been other fan service like that ever since then. You could argue that episode two with the Winces fan service and the sister getting on top and having a little bit of cleavage showing. I don't think it's the same as what Kuze did to Aria in episode one. They're actually crazy for doing that shit. I understand that sex sells and that first impressions is an important thing and you need to hit home that, you know, you need to get eyes on this anime and in order to do that, sometimes you fan the flames of controversy or fan service, but like, damn, they really did that shit? And then now, the fan service is like mild if not like nothing. And I honestly, I prefer it that way. Like, I would prefer like, sometimes, too much fan service can just like ruin the whole immersion of the show. It just kind of feels wrong. And I'm glad that Rochester is not doing that like in episode one. Also joined by other characters like Kuze's sister, Yuki, who is equally as mischievous. At school, she's working for the student council and she's very refined and very beautiful. But when at home, yes, she's a dork otaku. And yes, she loves to tease Alia, insinuating a lot of the time that her and Kuze are going out. And then we have Masha, who is Alia's sister, who seemingly is the childhood friend of Kuze. Remember, seemingly 99.99999% likely but not a confirmation just yet. A, which he learned Russian in order to communicate to. All the characters are absolutely fantastic. They're absolutely beautifully portrayed. Dogokobo is doing an incredible job with the animation. Yeah, they the are. The expressiveness of the character. I love their mischievous faces so much. And while, yes, it is. Yeah, they all have, like, Yuki especially. Like, th the amount of, like, smugness they have is crazy. Presenting a sort of rom-com trope with the idea of which one is a childhood friend. I think it's doing it in a way that's not as distracting as you typically get. A lot of the focus seems to be in the in and now, and yes, slowly sprinkling a lot of the trauma that the characters has gone through in the past. The character writing, the chemistry, everything is just top Fantastic. notch. And I love the show, right? Again, the mystery of like who the childhood friend could be is always there to kind of keep us on bay. And yes, now it seems like it's Masha, but you really never know. And then the whole other plot of trying to get Kuz to join a student council present, the whole... Uh, this, the the next student council press nomination, you know, election thing, right? With Aria going in, that's like the whole focus point and them getting together and even like other scenes where I keep relating to Classroom the Elite because Aria keeps going around thinking that she can do it by herself and that everyone else is useless and Kuze's around to teach her that that's not the case. And there's a lot of similarities. I thought that I was trying a little bit too hard and reaching into Classroom the Elite, you know, references because I personally love Classroom the Elite, but it's just like, holy shit. A lot of the things happening is very Code-esque. And it just has me every single week eagerly waiting the next episode. And that is it. That is my top 10 new anime of okay. the summer 2020. Do we have any mentions? Yes, honorable mentions. Here we go. Season. For my honorable mentions, I'll say Wistoria. I'm really yes. enjoying that show. It looks really, really incredible. But I... Why'd you not put this shit in? You put this... Sh <sighs> I know. Because, like, again, his flavor profile is less into the power fantasy and the fight shit, right? He's more into the drama and the slice of life. We'll admit that I am kind of a little bit tired right now of the OP main character that's trying to prove themselves even though they're really OP. <laughs> Dalian- <laughs> What he just said is pretty much just like, describe the types of enemies that we watch in a nutshell. That's pretty much it. Say it again. 
that I am kind of a little bit tired right now yeah. of the OP main character that's trying yep. to prove themselves, even though they're really OP. Dally that is our entire niche. That's our entire identity. And I will continue vertically farming into that niche. And Bloom's really, really good. I, I think I need a couple more episodes to really be sure exactly where this show's going to go into. So far, it's been pretty... Too many misogynists in my chat. Y'all said that you don't want to watch an isekai where the main character is a girl. No, I'm kidding. But this anime, uh, I, I don't think the interest was really there. Introductory. Bye Bye Earth is also very introductory. This is the furry isekai, right? Where it's just like, the furries are discriminating against the human. And that's actually a really interesting twist. Doctory, looking forward to seeing where that goes forward from here. Music's fantastic, by the way. I parry everything has been decent. Like, I, I'm very... Yeah, I don't think that it's peak. I, again, I love the whole concept of it. I don't think it's peak, but it is a decent watch. And I'm glad that I'm watching it. I would rate this like a, somewhere around like a 7. Very pleasantly surprised by it, but that's also another one of those I'm super OP, but don't know that I'm super OP. Perry is fucking killing you? In what way? In a good way? In like a funny way? The way that he just parries everything, even his brain cells? You mean the comedy is getting you, Joe? Shows. And finally, quality assurance, I'm very, very mixed on. It's a VR MMO, trapped in a VR MMO, doing bug testing, and it just, it, it feels off a little bit, but I do. We gotta learn how to parry the copyright strikes, and Joe, Stick around in the stream. I have something to show you regarding copyright strikes and stuff like that. Love the style of it. For continuing series, yes, I am absolutely, absolutely loving the return of Monogatari series with Off and Monster Season. Shaft is back. The team is back. Monogatari. <laughs> that fucking head tilt. The Shaft tilt. We haven't watched Monogatari in our channel. So, like, uh, I'm sure it's amazing. But uh, personally, I haven't even gotten started on it. So who knows when we can watch this shit. Series is back and better than ever. And yes, focusing in on some of my favorite characters like Nanako and Yatsuki. This series just continues to excel on some of the greatest character writing, greatest dialogue exchanges, greatest chemistry. And yes, this really cool little sprinkle of Supernatural that just always has me intrigued. Cool. Obviously, yes, the return of Oshinako. Oshino mid! I'm standing by that, bro. I still think that Oshinoko was overhyped due to a bunch of tourists getting aggroed, right? They got baited by season one, episode one. They wanted the murder mystery, but they were served idle stuff and they got filtered out. And even less people are watching season two after that filter. Heavily the audience demographic is in Japan based, but the global audience that speaks English, there's really low interest in it. Oshinoko, I love it right now, but it's just sad to see the current state of affairs. I absolutely love this series, and I'm grateful to see it back. Now, I will admit that it hasn't been as great as the mm. first season so far, but that still doesn't mean that it's not an incredible series and that I'm just looking forward to every single week. Da -da Demons, da -da -da Destructions is... Hey, Joe, this is your favorite one. Da -da 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 -da. Absolutely fantastic. Yes, it technically is a new show, but it kind of fell in the previous season, but it's... Yo, that girl's eyebrows are so fucking strong. Oh my God. One of those shows that when I start watching it, I just can't stop watching it. It is so well done. I find the world itself very intriguing. She got the Rock Lee eyebrows. I kind of quote it as a sci-fi slice of life like there's this massive alien invasion happening and okay. kids are just trying to live the art style is very unique that sounds pretty interesting sci-fi invasion by aliens and kids are just trying to live i think the characters themselves are very Revival? quirky and i just can't wait for more spice and wolf is still continuing to be a fantastic series and i'm so happy that they're actually joe did you drop spice and wolf episode one for me did amazing because the virality of spice and wolf returned and then the people show their true colors as they realize that they don't actually give a fuck about this shit and we have to drop it. Surprised that it's two cores right now. Maybe I shouldn't be surprised. Covering a lot of the skip content they didn't do in the first season, which gives me hope that they're actually going to do a full adaptation this time. It just looks good. I love the chemistry as always. It's just a series that I can't get enough of. Near Automata, yes, I'm loving that show. So Scheduling, right? Everyone forgot about... They, no one even fucking finished watching season one because of the scheduling bullshit. Now season two suffers even though the anime is great. Far, it got super dark this season and I cannot wait for more. I haven't started Sengoku Yoku yet, but I'm looking forward to the second season of that. Sengoku Yoku, the anime that is the reason why ReZero got stalled, which I'm actually grateful for because it let my channel grow longer and now I can capitalize on ReZero with the newest boost in algorithm. At that time I got reincarnated as slime. Ooh, Otaku Spirit! Tell me how you really feel. Tell me how you really feel about Tensura Season 3. Let's hear it. Well, I can't say this is my favorite season. I am still enjoying that as well. Mmm, that's a safe way. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a safe way of approaching it. 
and I'm still looking to get caught up on Yatakarasu and Yozakura Family. Those two shows I'm kind of behind on, but I'm still enjoying them a lot. And that is it. That is the most promising top favorite show. You know what? Again, guys, everyone has their own different opinions on what they think is entertainment. And entertainment is subjective, and Otaku Spirit was gracious enough to share his own takes on what the top 10 list is. Go check out his video! Like his channel and sub to his channel. I think that the list was overall pretty damn good. I'm just a little sad that, you know, Wistoria didn't get included, and I don't think he watches Tower of God. But of all those animes, maybe we could watch that... Uh, remember that short anime? The rom-com one, where it's like 11 minutes? The one with the magical girls being overtired? Maybe we could do that at the end of the season, but that's it for me.